Hello, hello, hello. You're not going to believe this. But the Vikings, they have a bye this week. Does anyone know what that means? The Vikings have a bye this week. Anyway, on to math. Solving equations by factoring. So you might say, why are we doing all this factoring, Mr. Kramer? Well, because we want to solve equations by factoring. So let's talk about a product um, property. It's called the zero product property. And this is how it goes. If A times B is equal to zero, what must be true of A or B? Hmm. Hmm. A or B? Well, one of them, or maybe even both of them, one of them must be equal to zero. For example, eight times what equals zero? Well, obviously, the only number that works is zero. What times A equals zero? Well, obviously, has to be zero. So why is this important? Well, take a look. When we solve a quadratic, for example, okay, there's there's standard form. And that may be what our parabola looks like. Okay? Well, where are the solutions located on this parabola? They're located on the x-axis. Remember, remember, these, we learned that these points are known as the roots. The solutions, the x-intercepts, and possibly the zeros. Okay? Now, if these if this is where the solutions are located, what is the value of y for both of these points? Well, zero, of course. So, our y has got to be equal to zero. Okay? So, let's take a look at number one. Notice that we have two factors and it's equal to zero. Remember, this is our y value. In order to find the solutions, the equation must be set equal to zero because the solutions are located on the x-axis and the y value of both of these is zero. So using the zero product property, we're going to take the first factor, which is x, and set it equal to zero. Ah, easy. We, it's solved already for us. Take the second factor, set it equal to zero. Oh, we got a little work to do here to find out what x equals, so we're going to go ahead and add 2 on both sides. And so our second solution is 2. So we have two real solutions. Um, and that's how we write solutions. We write them like this. Now, if we were to write them as x-intercepts, we would write them as 0, 0, and 2, 0. Okay, let's look at number two. Remember the steps. We take, we're going to use the zero product property and we're going to set each factor equal to zero. So our first factor, okay, so solving this one, we have a solution of three. Take our second factor. Solve for x, 
our second solution is negative 4. These are also known as the roots. Take a look at number 3. Little extra work to do. Now, know that this is not factored form, okay? But these are factors, okay? So we can take the factor 2n minus 4, set it equal to 0. Now, this is a two step equation. The previous one was a one step equation. One step got the answer. Here we have two steps. First, we undo adding and subtracting. Remember what you do to one side, you do to the other side. We undo multiplication with division. So there is one solution. Again, when you see letters other than X, know that this represents your X intercept. 2 comma 0. Okay, let's do the other factor. And we're going to subtract 5, divide by 3. We're going to end up with negative 5 thirds. Take a look at number 4. Now I want to solve by factoring, so what do we have to do here? That's correct, we have to factor it. So first thing I ask myself, can I factor a 2 out of each term? No. Difference of two squares? No. So I'm going to go straight to my x factor. Remember it's a times c. on top, the B value on the bottom, okay, two numbers that multiply to give me negative 56 and add to give me negative 1. A value goes on top, factor goes on the bottom, reduce if possible write the factor. So we have 1x minus 4. We have 2x plus 7. And we're going to set this equal to 0 because this was equal to 0 up above. Okay, now we're ready to solve. So set each factor equal to 0. and solve. What is x equal? What does x equal? Please find those answers out for tomorrow. Take a look at number five on the back. Remember, a represents x. We need to first set this equation equal to zero. Since my a squared is positive, I'm going to move everything over here with my a squared. So if I move the negative 5 over to the other side, it becomes positive 5a. If I move the 24 over to the other side, it becomes negative 24. Because I'd have to subtract it to get, it, to get rid of it. I'd have to add it to cancel it out. So that leaves me with 0 over here once I cancel those out. All right. Now we're ready to write the factors and solve. Please finish this problem. Let's take a look at number six. Uh, I think you got the idea of what we're doing here. First thing we have to do is what? What is the first step? Okay, let's take a look at number seven for a moment. Okay, the area of a rectangular room is given by the equation y squared minus seven, excuse me, w squared minus seven w equals 18, where w is the width of the room. Find the width. Well, basically guys, we're just solving for w. We're trying to find the solutions. So 
this isn't any different than what we've been doing. We're just trying to find W. So again, we start by setting the equation equal to zero. So I'm going to cancel out that 18. I'm going to factor it. Don't you wish you could do factoring that quickly? Negative 2 times 2, negative 9 plus 2, the A value over the factor, the A value over the factor, 1x minus 9, 1x plus 2, x equals 9, x equals negative 2. Now, it says find the width of the room. We got two answers. Which one will it be? Dun, dun, dun. What movie is that from? Dun, dun, dun. Which one will it be? Hmm, which one will it be? Hmm. Are you watching this video all the way to the end? There may be a video quiz question coming up. Mr. Kramer, hurry up. I got other things to do. How many question marks? did I put on this paper in this area right here. See you tomorrow. Bye.